Okay. Gas in Vancouver hit the $1.75 a liter mark. So for those of you who might be watching either from the US or think about things in gallons, that is $6.61 Canadian a gallon. And if you're in the US, it's $4.90 based on today's exchange rates, American per gallon. So $1.75 a liter for gas in Vancouver. Okay, so um, I, I wanna break, I wanna break down uh, the, the gas price issue. For those of you who might be watching who have friends that are like, you know, we really want to do our part to, um, to, to to stop climate change and this is, you know, everybody gets a rebate on it. It's a great thing. Whoa, stop. Okay, so at $1.75 a liter for gasoline, what happens in Canada? Do you stop filling up your car? Do you stop heating your home in the middle of the winter? Like, do you change your behavior? If you're changing your behavior, you're changing your behavior to not fill up your car and not do something, like not go to work or not go to an event or because you can't afford to do it. You're not replacing that with a substitute good, right? So what we've got here in basic terms is a punitive policy that makes you choose not to do something in a way that damages the economy, right? So typically in a situation like this, with a policy, people would, you know, if you think about a syntax on things like cigarettes or, you know, on pop, the, the, the objective is to get you to not buy as much of that, right? The problem is with a good like gasoline or carbon products that we use to heat our homes in the cold place of Canada where we have to travel a long ways to get to things, it's difficult to find a substitute good for that, especially if you're in parts of the country where you don't have public transit or you have to use your truck for things like agriculture, right? So, so th there's this big fallacy that somehow a carbon tax is going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Canada by causing you to change your behavior without ruining the economy, right? Because that's what the left, that's what these, you know, the people on the left, these leftist politicians will come and say, oh, it's revenue neutral, it's totally benefiting everybody, low-income seniors are better off. No, they're not. Think about this. Okay, so $1.75 a liter for gasoline. Uh, okay, so if somebody, if a trucker is filling up in the Metro Vancouver area right now and is taking a load of, let's say, unrefined timber, okay, and they're taking that to a plant. So where does the cost for that transport get, get shifted? It goes to the people that are buying that timber to make something out of it. Then that plant has to use what? Electricity, other input costs, probably some more gasoline afterwards to transport the finished good. And where does the cost of the tax go? It goes to the consumer, right? So that's the thing. A carbon tax is, is like, it functions like a consumption tax in that it's incremental and it increases the cost all along the production chain. So if you're going to make an argument that the carbon tax is going to help uh, low-income people actually hurts low-income people the most. Outside of the, uh, the, the the disproportionate impact a carbon tax would have on a low-income person's income, it also, not just, just filling up gas or heating a home, it also has an impact because the costs of goods rise. Why? Because we transport things using what? For the most part, carbon products, right? So, it's complete bunk, right? In no way can a politician look you in the eye and tell you that it is more efficient to take your money, pay bureaucrats to take your money, okay? Then um, take bureaucrats to pay your money, to, to, to pay bureaucrats to take your money, and then somehow redistribute it back to you. That's not efficient at all, especially when it's not gonna change your behavior, right? 
The reason why I stand up in the House of Commons over and over and over again and ask the Environment Minister and Justin Trudeau this question, what price elasticity assumptions have you used in modeling the carbon tax to show that it's going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Outside of the fact that when I ask that question, Justin Trudeau looks at me like I'm speaking an alien because I don't think he understands basic economics at all. That aside, they can't answer the questions. They can't tell you what price carbon products have to be at, in Canada for behavior to change without the economy being ruined, right? It's a huge problem. So, you know, let's talk about somebody who's not low income for a minute, right? Let's talk about the person who's in downtown Vancouver, who's like, you know, is really well off. Maybe somebody like David Suzuki, right? Who's like, oh, carbon tax, it's so great. I don't mind paying a little more for my, my gasoline. I'm just gonna fill this up here and I'm doing my part for the environment. Yes, low income people. Well, come on, okay, David Suzuki, I'm sure you can afford to pay that little bit extra, but it's not changing your behavior. It's not, it, it, we're, and you're actually causing affordability to be a more of a problem for low-income seniors. And on top of all of this, you're doing nothing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It's all a big joke, it's all a big farce. So let's talk about um, what's happening in British Columbia right now. And I just read a news article. So Premier John Horgan, who right now is taking 35 cents a liter, okay? So of that cost, that, that the high cost, 35 cents, according to this one article I read, is tax. So somebody asked him, well, what are you gonna do to get gas prices under control? He's like, well, we, we need more refined product. Wait, hold up, what? So you've got the premier of British Columbia who is like, no pipelines, get out of here, oil products. We don't want any of your vile, life-destroying. Like he, he then says, well, we need more refined product. And why? Because we need these products to make the economy go. Yes, we can be looking at substitute goods and developing these things, but like we, we still need these products to function. So, so for him to come out after completely yelling against pipelines for years and then say, well, we need more refined product. Well, think about what would happen if the Trans Mountain Pipeline was built. You'd actually free up capacity across the supply chain to bring more refined product into BC and also He's got to point the finger, finger inwardly. He's totally happy to take 35 cents a liter, knowing that it's not reducing demand or materially impacting greenhouse gas emission reduction because it funds his tax and spend socialist stuff. This, the carbon tax is the biggest scam possible when, it, especially when it's, context, it's contextualized in the lie that it's going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. It, it, it's, it's crazy. So, so if you have somebody who's in Vancouver who is really well off and is, you know, will say, oh, you know, I don't mind paying an extra, oh, who cares? It's like $10 a tank, whatever. I can afford that. Well, guess what, person? A lot of, for a lot of people, $10 is a lot of money, right? So I, I, for that person, I care about the environment. I want to make sure that our environment is sustainable and that we're addressing these issues. But why would we support or, or put credence behind a policy that not only makes life less affordable for low income people, seniors in Canada, across the board, not only makes our economy less competitive, but doesn't reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Ah, so, you know, Michelle, it, you'll say to me, oh, Michelle, you know, well, what about your climate change policy, right? The reality is, is that in Canada, there, we're not France, we're not Germany, we're not a jurisdiction that's small, that's condensed, that has, you know, really condensed public transit. It's cold here. We're a natural resource based economy. We buy a lot of stuff from countries that have high emitting profiles like China. So the, the, the answer to that question is, is complex. There's no one silver bullet. You know, we have to look at things like making, making things more energy efficient, right? Making sure that we have a regulatory environment that doesn't send investment and jobs away from Canada, attracts investment in our energy sector, 
but also is in sense the adoption of clean technology. I mean, I could go on and on, and my, my leader, Andrew Scheer, will be talking more about our environmental policy in coming weeks, but this, this lie, anybody who cares about Canada's environment and thinks that a carbon tax is gonna make Canada cleaner, I have a question for you. How much tax do, does somebody in High River need to pay to make sure that their town doesn't flood? How much tax does somebody in Fort McMurray need to pay to make sure that they don't, that the forest doesn't burn down again? It's just, it's, it's a preposterous suggestion to say that a virtually inelastic product in Canada, a tax on it, is going to somehow reduce greenhouse gas emissions without completely ruining the economy or making life a lot less affordable for Canadians. So, I, you know, if you find yourself in the Vancouver area, um, it, Look, and, and, and look, even if you don't vote my political persuasion, you need, to, you need to ask yourself why this tax is in place if it's not doing anything to protect the environment. It's crazy. Uh, I didn't even get into the whole topic of, about how, you know, the carbon tax affects manufacturing, how it affects uh, investment in this country. It's just bananas. And this is why we have premier after premier being elected on a platform to scrap the tax. The, the cherry on the top of this scam is the fact that Justin Trudeau is going to force premiers who were elected on a mandate to scrap a carbon tax to spend taxpayer dollars to sue the federal government for a policy that doesn't work. That is the cherry on top of the Justin Trudeau garbage sandwich on this policy. So, oppose the carbon tax if you're on the left or on your, you're on the right. This makes life less affordable. It's not going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It's a big cash grab. It does nothing but harm the most vulnerable people in our country. It does nothing but cost jobs. And it is just, you know, if aliens were looking in from outer space into Canada on this debate and they were economists, they would go, this is crazy. This is crazy talk. So this is why we're fighting the carbon tax so hard because it's not going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and it makes life, life less affordable. It kills jobs and it is just bad public policy. If you happen to get into a fight with an economist who thinks it's good to cut public policy, watch for one thing that they say. They'll spin out of the debate about when you start saying like, well, how much greenhouse gas emissions will actually reduce, they'll be like, well, that's not important. It's about pricing pollution. Wait, that's just a consumption tax. If the goal, the policy goal is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, then that red herring is not going to work. Duh. Anyway, I just had to leave you with that thought before I head back to Ottawa. Working hard for you in Calgary. Have a great day.